This meeting is for stakeholders in the BCH ecosystem to coordinate and communicate their plans about this upgrade. Viewers on YouTube are encouraged to ask questions in the live stream chat, and we'll do our best to get to them. So some Bitcoin Cash stakeholders have already announced plans to not implement any consensus changes for this coming upgrade. So um, Emergent Reasons, could you start us off with uh, a description of basically what that means and what the reasoning is behind it? Yeah, sure. So um, I'll, I'll be speaking as a representative of general protocols, um, you know, as, as a business uh, operating on the Bitcoin Cash network, and um, from our perspective, the uh, there was an announcement, right, that that you're talking about, where uh, a number of the uh, full node projects, uh, maybe all of them, I'm not sure, all of them, but many of them posted their intention to say that um, basically that they didn't intend to do any consensus changes on the network, and that there was no outstanding plans that were in any kind of condition to, to be upgraded in May in any case. And um, yeah, so General Protocols supports that. And we published an article as well that said, uh, although there's some things that that we would really like to see improved in the protocol, right? Not not huge changes, but um, uh, reasonable changes and, and focused changes. Although we would like those and we really need those, it's not ready. So, you know, we, we wait and we want to set up that culture and, and general protocol supports that, that kind of shift towards a culture where we get ready. Um, we, we communicate openly, publicly, all of these ideas get aired out and, and, and beat up and, and reformed and, and refined. And uh, yeah, we support that. So yeah, in May, uh, no consensus changes, uh, general protocol supports that. Maybe like you, you mentioned that it does seem like some people are, are confused about no consensus changes means nothing happens. And I think it's that's not the case. And I think some of the, the people here uh, are able to speak to that better than me. But but there are, I think, some changes that, that people want to do that aren't related to consensus. And so uh, it's improvements that don't really lead to any kind of split risk or anything like that. So yeah, I think it's a great place that we're starting from for me. Could I ask maybe someone else to elaborate just a little bit on if things aren't ready, then obviously we shouldn't put them in. But there's obviously some extra risk to any upgrade, uh, especially if it's not been prepared enough. So maybe it would be worth elaborating just a little bit on the, the history of, of, of how that turned out being the case that maybe this this time we should just not do anything or at least that, that, that it could be that case at all. I, I'll uh, join, join uh, the conversation a little bit. Um, so for May, there was an upgrade scheduled and uh, I think it's it's something that we all agree we will use it instead to to help us take a breather and, and give our ecosystem some time to work on adoption and work on a, a stability. So when we said that we have a no changes goal, uh, we now propose uh, it's, it's where most users do not need to upgrade their wallet or software this May. And I I hope that this helps us get all uh, the stable footing again, and from there to work with merchants and others in order to uh, to grow adoption. Because adoption is really the, 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 the focus that I believe personally that our, our ecosystem should work on uh, now. And, and as, as uh, Emergent Reason said, you know, it's really important to get no new features in. But we can work on those um, at the same time uh, in the background, basically. And then these people will have more time to get the better quality uh, that we need. And I think we will also work on how to do upgrades in a better way going forward, because we all are very, very tired of, of uh, conflicts that end up being escalated to uh, unmanageable proportions. So if instead we, we end up having more conversations, we can avoid any of such uh, confrontations ending up being too big to, to manage. Sure. So before we move on to then uh, non-consensus changes, would anyone else like to um, either ask a question or share an experience or uh, share a perspective on this, uh, the decision on the not doing consensus level upgrades before we move on? Um, I think it's just a matter of um, keeping in mind that like the, the upgrade in May, uh, a lot of nodes don't have to upgrade, like literally you don't have to upgrade your software if you don't want to. Uh, the exception would be uh, BCHN because of some legacy carryover from, from the uh, previous fork. Uh, the important distinction though is who has to upgrade um, and who doesn't have to upgrade. So with a non-consensus upgrade, wallets and users don't have to upgrade their software. If you're running a node, 
um, which if you're a business or, or if you are a user running, running a node, um, you should probably check with your node maintainer or implementation to see if you should upgrade or if you have to upgrade. I think that's the only real, I think, miss communication about what non-consensus means and it's just who has to do what uh when um and historically everyone's tried to have to upgrade but but basically if you're a wallet user uh nothing's going to be different from from your software if you don't want it to be appreciate you adding that josh so i think we can move right on then to talking a little bit about the non-consensus uh, upgrades or uh you know however you want to call them uh upgrades or changes or that are going to be happening maybe this May. Uh, and I'm just going to open that up uh, from Free Trader. He says, I want to confirm what Emergent Reasons said from the point of view of Bitcoin Cash node. We are committed to the joint statement of a May upgrade without consensus changes. This does, of course, not mean we're not working on non-consensus changes. Uh, we are still working on an important non-consensus change, the increase of allowable unconfirmed transaction chain lengths. Okay. It doesn't mean we're not working on non-consensus change. That's that's a pretty amazing sentence. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, so if anyone would like to uh, respond or comment on that, you can go ahead, uh, Tom. Thank you. Yes. On the side of the non-consensus changes, I've been working with BCH and, and, and others on uh, at least double spend proofs, which have landed in BCH and just last week. We're also working on the follow-up for that to actually go on for the next step, which is to have the RPC. The, the, the interface between the node and other components. The important part there is that uh, all the nodes basically have the same RPC interface. So you still have the ability for uh, middleware uh, to just plug and play whichever node you want to run. And so uh, BHHN has been working hard to actually implement some really good uh, ideas there, uh, which I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody else will just copy. And then uh, the next step is to go up one level, which is the, the uh, middleware that's going to be the REST APIs, the, the Fulcrum and, and others are going to actually use all of this to actually provide a, a yes, no answer to everybody that asks, uh, specifically wallets are going to be very interested in that answer. So we're, we're moving on to double spend proofs. And that is, I think, the main issue for the, the main project I'm uh, also working on. Uh, so just to quickly follow up from that, and uh, I do see your hand, Emergent, so we'll be right to that. If you want to go ahead, Emergent, I'll take a second. Yeah, sure. I, well, actually, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to, to attempt to to rephrase that in terms that maybe everybody can understand. So make sure I get this right, Tom. But um, I think the point with double spin proofs is that it will help the, the, the steps that are being taken by, by a bunch of developers and nodes and projects are to get it built up to the level that there's infrastructure so that, you know, anybody making an app or a wallet or, or any kind of uh, high level thing using Bitcoin Cash, they'll have an easy interface to just be like, hey, uh, a transaction happened and then they get an automatic notification that there was a double spend or something like that. And then they can say, hey, something's wrong you know, be careful with that transaction. And that will further improve the, uh, the security of zero conf so that uh, we can have, continue to have effectively instant transactions and even better security on those instant transactions. Is that fair, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good uh, okay. description. The the way that we're going, uh, especially also with the uh, longer chain lengths that uh, BCHN is working on, is that uh, we re we will need some more proof of uh, zero conf being safe. And I think that's that's where we're going now, and that's kind of making really good progress. All right, I have a message from Free Trader here. Uh, at BCHN, we'd like to thank Tom and the BU developers for pushing the double spend proof initiative. We think this will be really useful for merchants in the future. From the interfaces angle, I'd like to drop this link here for others to review. So there it is. Uh, this merge requests. This merge request is RPC interfaces proposed by Cal and Culliano. Thank you very much, Free Trader. Uh, I think one thing that would be worth clarifying uh, as, as quickly as we can, whoever would like to take this is, uh, this is something that's being worked on and there, I guess this is a statement, feel free to then correct me. And there is not really anything that anybody but the people working on it need to do in the near future. Is, is that right? Or is there something that business, businesses should be thinking about? So what, what we will 
uh, end up with if all of this is complete and all of this is working is that uh, point of sale systems and of course wallets that are receiving information will um, be able to uh, say, hey, first step, I, I've seen a transaction that pays me. And then within a couple of seconds say, uh, this is a, a transaction is safe and you will uh, uh, get paid uh, when the block gets mined. And so the only thing really needs to be done is when this all is done, when all, all of the, the technology is written, that people run the nodes and the, sorry, the wallet to actually uh, use this information. Um, and that's it. So basically, whenever you have the uh, the merchants, um, they will have a new feature in the wallet. And that's about it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so before we move on now, I think, Tom, you, you did already mention uh, the unconfirmed chain limit. Uh, would anyone else like to add on to the uh, discussion on double spend proofs? Oh, sorry, Paul, yeah. you do have your hand up, my fault. Please go ahead. Yeah, if I can jump in. So just to point out that, um, you know, BU has, has already um, implemented this in, in uh, their node, um, in their client, um, both unconfirmed transaction uh, chain limit to, to a much uh, larger number. And the double spend proofs, obviously, thanks to a huge part to, to the work that Tom has done on that. Um, so, you know, this this is these, these seem to be features that all no teams are working on to get them implemented on the Bitcoin cash network. So like it's been reiterated multiple times, like it's not that work has stopped, work is like absolutely still going on upgrading Bitcoin cash. It's just the case that in the May upgrade that there's no uh, consensus changes that are happening. Um, but yeah, there's, there's still major upgrades that are being worked on right now by uh, each of the node teams. So yeah, I just wanted to point out that BU is totally on board with you know, getting double spend proofs and uh, long unconfirmed transaction chains added to Bitcoin Cash. Thanks, I appreciate you clarifying that and uh, adding it. Emergent reasons, please go ahead. Yeah, um, so the, the, uh, the, the question, Tom mentioned something that's very important, which is that the, uh, the double spend work, uh, and, and you also, uh, John, um, the double spend work is not something that necessarily has to be uh, related to main. There's nothing that people really need to do. It's just that they're going to get a new feature. But it is important to know, right, that that uh, the, the people who are building Bitcoin Cash Network are thinking very carefully about the safety of everything and making sure that ZeroConf, uh, you know, stays safe, even with these much larger uh, unconfirmed chain limits and things like that. Um, and another point that I wanted to bring up that I hope... Uh, the, the other guys here can discuss, maybe not too technically, but but a little bit that um although double spin proofs is something that pretty much anyone can start using at any time, the unconfirmed chain limit is something that needs to be coordinated. Uh, it has a timing element to it, in my understanding. And so the May upgrade, although rushed, right, the, the six, not, not rushed for these, but for consensus, right? We're doing no consensus. So, right, six months is, is very fast for consensus issues. But um. But having that time point, that May time point is actually very useful, um, I think, uh, in terms of, of having some kind of coordination point for things like the, the transaction chain limit, which, which need coordination. But, but um, m maybe that can, can shift over to the, to the chain limit discussion and, and make sure that I'm, I'm saying the right thing here. Sure. And so if, if anyone would like to add on, clarify, or, or maybe, you know, just make sure we don't talk too much about really what it is, but more, you know, what is it that people would need to know about it and who are those people that need that information? Um, if I just jump in, so it's essentially, it would be like uh, Tom pointed out, it's for either merchants themselves or people building the software for merchants. So if you take like a specific example, the Bitcoin Cash or the, the Cash Register app that Bitcoin.com uh, works on, you would expect to see uh, a notification pop up when a double spend has occurred. Um, so it's, it's essentially providing that information that the merchant needs at the right, time. Right, and I apologize. I actually meant to move on to the unconfirmed chain limit. And so that's uh, what I intended to move on to there. So that's my apologies. But yeah, for the unconfirmed chain limit, if we could move on to that, what would be in that case, the, you know, the people that need to know what to change and, and also what does anyone else uh, want to speak on whether like is May 6th the currently the plan is is that something that has been decided or is still in the works does anyone have uh 
a specific proposal? So oh, maybe sorry, ahead, um, the uh, the best background here is that um, we started out with a chain limit uh, inherited from Bitcoin Core because of a feature called child pays for parent. And that feature, when it was added, we ended up having a, a, a scaling problem. And it turns out when you have uh, blocks that basically don't uh, really get full and your fees are not going to shoot out of the roof, you don't really need that feature. And we might add it later, but basically the, 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 the decision is that we can remove the feature child pays for parent and therefore have uh, longer chains uh, going. And this is what, what a lot of uh, teams are, have, have uh, decided and is, are going to do. We don't really have any coordination about, hey, this is the time we're going to do it, because as Emergent said, there is some uh, reason to actually uh, coordinate this. But I, I uh, basically think that this is going to be done uh, when all nodes feel comfortable that their software implementations are going to be uh, stable enough. And, you know, then it can be done within a couple of weeks, especially since we already know that the BCHN uh, node has to be upgraded uh, due to some legacy decisions. Uh, so when they have a longer chain, it's going to be much easier to, to get this uh, uh, rolled out. So I think that's uh, uh, the main uh, thing with the longer chain. It's going to be a little bit of uh, development work, and then it's going to just be coordination to roll it out. That's it. Not very hard. Okay, then maybe that's something that's that's worth clarifying. Is that so? The coordination hasn't happened yet, um, and so is it the case that it may or may not be coordinated for this May sixth upgrade? Well, I guess that yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay, uh, thanks very much. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that Free Trader probably okay, a couple, has a statement oh, sorry, here. Uh, this is from Free Trader. For the unconfirmed chain limits, there is, as John mentioned, a coordination opportunity in May. This coordination to raise the limit from its current value of 50 transactions would need to happen between the full nodes on the network and particularly the miners. On BCHN side, we need to do some implementation and testing ahead of May to figure out the capacity of our software that we can safely underwrite. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, adding that it's uh, valuable so that we can, you know, everyone get, gets a feel for where exactly we are in the process. Uh, I said, I've said this in some chat channels before, but my feeling is that an increase to 500 is the low end of what we should be aiming for slash be capable of. Very cool. Oh, well, I guess first I'll open it up if anyone would like to um, add to or respond to uh, what Free Trader said. Uh, I realized, you know, this is a somewhat... Uh, this has been talking about dev topics, but obviously, you know, if, if any business leaders uh, who are or aren't involved in the tech have any concerns or anything they'd like to bring up just with current stakeholders, please feel free. Uh, and then if not that, then are there any other things that people would like to bring up about May 6th? Paul, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'd just like to point out like why this is an issue. Um, because I've, I've personally experienced it myself. So um, the, the first London meetup that we started, uh, you know, for, for over three years ago now, um, uh, when you went to spend lots of transactions, like we were trying to give away Bitcoin, essentially, Bitcoin Cash. Um, when you try and make lots of transactions, you would come up against this limit. And it feels very, very stupid when you're trying to show people the power of this new money and then just the, your app just goes, no, you can't send that money. So, you know, that you need to remove these barriers so that you can send money as whenever or you know, however you like, essentially. So um, the, the issue is we want there to be as few barriers as possible to be able to spend the money you have. No one likes the computer to say no. So this is, this is one of the ways of doing that. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Go ahead, uh, Merchant. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that, um, yeah, absolutely. You want to get rid of uh, that type of friction and, and barriers that, that cause problems. And at the same time, um, I'll try to just talk about it at a high level. Um, there, there's some other networks that, that just say, you know, oh, there's no limits. Do everything you want. And um, in reality, that doesn't work out, right? You break your network. Um, so uh, I think what we're doing with Bitcoin Cash is is uh, is a bit of walking that that tightrope of uh, doing all the amazing things we can do, and also doing it in a realistic and safe way. So uh, that, I think that's a great thing about Bitcoin Cash. It's one of the best things that um, 
that we're, we're the most grounded in reality and focused on actually using it. And, you know, how, how does this look uh, 10 years in the future when there's, there's mass adoption and there's, there's thousands and thousands of transactions per second and, and so forth. So, yeah, I, I love that about Bitcoin Cash that we, that we're both trying to make it useful uh, for, for apps and developers and users and also trying to make sure that it's actually going to work in the future. It's something that um, doesn't exist in a lot of places in crypto. Thanks very much. Josh, please go ahead. Sure. Um, speaking to the transaction chaining limit um, regarding like businesses and, and uh, um, what, what, you'll, what businesses need to do currently for the transaction chaining limit, this is something that we uh, encountered in Dublin as well. Um, you have to, like a lot of businesses and software has to write limits specifically to know that they're chaining a transaction too deep um, because you kind of don't get a good amount of feedback when you hit that limit. So a lot of times, if you don't cover that yourself, you'll su you'll submit a transaction and then you just it just won't get accepted and you won't really know uh, why or, or even that it happened. Um, so for businesses that have already implemented that limit, it's actually they're actually in a really good position um, for the uh, you know when this does upgrade uh, because what they can do is they can have the network upgrade ahead of time and then when they're comfortable that it's at a state that it needs to be, they can reduce their own limit. So um, what can fundamentally happen, even if we do this in May or if we do this sometime after May, uh, once, once businesses that implement this limit um, like they can kind of go after the network. So it doesn't have to be this coordinated effort, say in May, where all of the nodes upgrade and we reduce this chain limit and all of the wallets and all of the businesses, we don't all have to do it together. Basically the fundamental level should do it all at the same time for, for um, those who don't manually um, uh, limit themselves just because of like, you know, it, it kind of reduces the security of zero comp if we, uh, if we're not all on the same page, but then they don't, the businesses themselves don't have to immediately update. Uh, so that's something that they can do at their own leisure. There isn't a stressful upgrade where if they, they don't do this, they're going to get forked off the network or anything like that. It's, it's, it's like a, this happened. And now if it's important to you, you can have a, you can provide a better user experience for your users when you're ready. Um, so I think overall it's kind of, again, just emphasizing the low pressure um, and the, the low um, cost for, for uh, businesses come May. Thank you, Josh. Much appreciated. So I'm going to open up the floor one more time. Uh, yeah. If there's any I'd like to, last thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like ahead, to jump Cameron. in. Yeah. Sorry. I can't find Thank the you. raise hand button. So, um, Anyways, um, the people that I work with and talk to the most are uh, people who like build on or uh, use Bitcoin Cash, not really so much the, the developer side of things. So what, what I'm hearing is um, no consensus change, but like double spend proofs and uh, changing the chain transactions. Um, but I think what the people I talk to are most curious about and most interested in is, is there going to be a split? I mean, a lot of people are really like they've, they've lived through the, you know, BSV. They just lived through the IFP. Last year was last year was really hard for a lot of people. Uh, they're just kind of giving up interest. And so what I'm curious about is it sounds to me like what you're talking about, the plan that you guys are, are talking about is going to not let a split happen in May. Is that is that true? Am I am I hearing this right, that a split is very unlikely come May? It would be very difficult for a split to happen at this point. Um, someone, one of the node implementations would have to go out of their way. Um, and then they would also have to significantly increase their minor share, which for anybody other than BCHN is already very, it's an uphill battle. So uh, I think users can, can definitely feel confident that there is not going to be a split of any kind in May. It would be very, very difficult for them to do that at this point. And maybe something that I'll add uh, quickly in between comments here is that uh, it's worth noting that when we talk about consensus changes, we're talking about things that uh, decide whether a block on the blockchain is valid. So splits only happen when there are differences in consensus rules. And that's something that we probably should have made clear uh, a little earlier, but right, that's, uh, that's even, you could argue that's sort of what it means. Uh, and so, sorry, go ahead, Emergent. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, I think Josh's answer was was great to you know recognize the reality that well anybody can split the network, but it's going to be like their own node and that's it, right? Doing its own thing off on the side somewhere. So so that's good, like to reflect that reality. And then at the same time, yeah, there's 
there's basically there's no chance of anything like that happening there's just nobody interested <laughs> anymore right in splits there's nobody who wants a split um it summarizes down to that there's nobody who's interested in that and uh we're we're, we're still learning how to make things happen without a you know without a king so to speak um so yeah i, I think things are are fine uh we have work to do to figure things out how to figure out process um how to figure out consensus and, and discussion and making sure that everybody's on the same page and that uh, ideas get the considered and get a lot of time to be looked at and peer reviewed and so forth so yeah we have a lot to work out but as far as splits go yeah no there's there's no chance of that yeah i was just going to say that uh, it seems to me that the goal is not just to have no splits in men it's just to, to have no splits in general <laughs> like for, for as long as is actually possible <laughs> um, which hopefully is many many years so uh, you know I think this is kind of part of what the, these discussions are about is bringing people to the table and getting as much buy-in from as many people in the ecosystem as possible so that splits just simply stop occurring um, so it's not just about May, it's about the, all the foreseeable future of Bitcoin Cash. Very good. Well, that's probably a good note to leave it on, but I, I will open, I'll leave it open one more time for just a couple seconds if there's any last minute questions or comments anyone would like to make before we finish up. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just throw one quick, quick one in just based on what everyone said right now. Um, is there something in, like, is, is there something that we're working on that's going to make sure that after may like like paul was just saying that it's going to continue we're going to we're going to be splitless for a while is that something that's a priority or is there plans like where do i learn what's what's going on with that i i'd like to to say something about that actually john is that all right sure please go ahead yeah so um uh, i think there's going to be more than one answer to that question um but it's nice because there's a lot of people who you know, are motivated to say, yeah, we're, we're really tired of this and it makes no sense. And none of the splits we've had had any good reason for them. So uh, yeah, let's stop doing that. And in order to do that, I think there will be multiple answers and we'll just try to figure things out. One thing that, that I'm working on is uh, trying to get people who have uh, specifically consensus changes. Because like you said, the consensus changes in the protocol are the ones that um, you know, have a risk of, of causing some kind of split if there's a huge disagreement or whatever. But, um, but for anything like that, uh, like I mentioned about getting ideas out in the air and, and well considered and, and a lot of feedback, in order to do that, I'm, I'm trying to uh, push uh, a kind of combination of uh, format of proposals and process. So uh, the chip proposal, the cash improvement uh, proposal that, uh, that Roscoe Callis has uh, suggested. So taking that idea and making that kind of the format, right? You know, if you're gonna, if you think something needs to be changed or that it's a good idea or it might be a good idea, then we have a culture of uh, putting ideas out there in a, in a relatively standardized format. And uh, that format includes, you know, all kinds of information um, like the technical ideas, what's the motivation, what's the business impact, uh, what are the costs to people on the network, the wallets and so forth? What are the what are the benefits to wallets and apps? And what are the benefits to holders and so forth? And then in addition to that, getting feedback, right? Like an RFC and making sure that we publicly uh, record, hey, this is what uh, these companies think about it. This is what those nodes think about it. This is what uh, large investors, this is their opinion on it. So uh, that format, I think will be will be very useful to have as a as a kind of uh, uh, standard, like a social standard that we say, oh, this new idea has appeared and it's very controversial. You know, it, it'll just be ignored, right? The, oh, well, okay, well, it came out of nowhere. No one's discussed it. It has no feedback. There's no RFC. Uh, miners haven't said what they think about it. Uh, businesses haven't said what they think about it. It, it would just, you know, everybody would look at it and be like, get out of here. What are you talking about? So I think that's the kind of culture we need to set up um, so that we have a permissionless network. There's no uh, reference. No, there's no there's no single person calling the shots. But we also have a kind of process in place that helps us uh, take ideas and, and, and digest them and publicly uh, comment on them and, and, and work on them. And then eventually they get to a point where it's like the DAA upgrade, right? It got to the point where it was just obvious that there was not really any disagreement about it, except for notable exception. 
which is one of the cases that came out of nowhere. Um, so the, there was just so much agreement on it and so much alignment that it wasn't even really a discussion. It was just like, okay, well, we're doing this thing. <laughs> so I, I think we need to get to that point and, and hopefully the chips will help and maybe other people will have other ideas. So we'll see how it goes. Sure, Josh, I'll get to you in just a second. I'll go ahead and read uh, Free, Traders, Free Traders' real new message. Uh, it says, if there's no consensus change proposed, then yeah, essentially someone would need to force a split. And there's nothing of that sort on the horizon at this time. And I think the point of getting stakeholders together and discussing like we do here and in various groups is to better understand each other's need and to make it less likely that some parties will feel a need to split. We are fortunate that we as Bitcoin Cash survived the split with ABC in November without the same extent of damage to our network as the split with SV. We, but we absolutely recognize the damage potential the damage potential of such splits and that we need to cooperate to preserve the network effect. That's a very significant goal. So thank you, Free Trader. Please go ahead, Josh. Uh, sure. I mean, and, and kind of building on the, uh, the plans for future splits and mitigations and like basically doing what we can uh, to responsibly avoid um, splits in the future. Uh, I think a lot of that has like a lot of the well, if we reflect on the the previous fork, right, um, the ABC uh, situation from from November, uh, the only reason that was even like a threat was because of this momentum with the quote unquote reference client, right? And and I think we as a like a, a culture in BCH now are trying to move away from that that reference client culture, and and I think we've done a really good job with these discussions and also just with the people uh, that we have developing and and ever like kind of like the social aspect of of what reference client is, but we also have like the technical component of what a reference client is, and if all miners are using the same implementation, um, it's kind of hard to to truly say, hey, we're, you know, a diverse network. And and we're making a lot of good strides um, this year uh, for for diversifying uh, mining in Bitcoin Cash. Um, the in January, uh, we released um, the, what we're calling the Bit Balancer, which is basically just a a, um, a tool that sits in front of um, multiple nodes for miners, so that um, accidental splits can't happen. Um, well, not that they can't happen; that they really shouldn't happen. Um, it, it's really it increases the the it decreases the likeliness of of an accidental split ever happening. Um, and what that really does, though, um, is it gets miners the the security to use multiple implementations, um, but it also kind of really and tangibly reduces the momentum of this concept of a of a reference client. Um, and and I think even the current status quo client PCHN has been very supportive of this goal. Um, like the, in order for the bit balancer to even happen, we had to have um, an RPC function merged into BCHN. And uh, the original plan for us to do that was for us to make a pull request. So we had to, we were planning on going into their code base and, and actually like, offering up this change. Um, they are so proactive that they did it for us. We didn't have to actually write the code to do the the, the merge request, um, which was amazing. Like we would have never seen that in, in historic like reference clients. So I think like just again, the culture around our environment is substantially healthier. Um, and I think if we, uh, and we, and you know, with the progress we've been making with the adoption for bit balancer and multi mode, uh, multi node mining, I think we're really going to see a, a healthy future where if any changes to the network um, are to happen, uh, they are coordinated and intentional. Um, so I think the future is really bright and, you know, there's been a lot of effort, uh, both technologically and socially uh, into getting us there. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of payoffs uh, from that uh, in the coming years. That is awesome. Josh. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Andrea, please go ahead. Oh, first of all, uh, hi, everybody. Um, to address directly what Cameron asked for, uh, I would say that there is no technical thing to make it so that we are we are going to avoid splits forever or even on a, on a, on a smaller uh, horizon, a year, two years, whatever. But <clears throat> I guess that the key point is the cultural uh, layer that we are embracing in BCH. We went through painful growth process that I think helped the community to 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 become a, 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 a community that could embrace a culture culture that uh, at the end of the day lead to a more cohesive and then uh, resilience uh, when it comes to avoid split and. 
everything that is that has been said in the last few minutes point exactly in that direction and then the bchn um way of uh, merging change without even waiting for contribution the the very project about the the bit balance thing um all the thing that has been said is the thing that we can need to continue to nurture it has to be something that never stop is not is not a goal it's a process we, we we need to continue to uh nurture this process it's not it's it's like freedom of speech it's like democracy is is a never ending uh process to defend what we achieve in, in the in the last few months so it is difficult but we are human and we know that when 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 a community need to grow uh all the the element of the community had to act contribute to to this growing process and not saying that it is easy but you know the the last few months if if anything teach us that that we could manage to to achieve this kind of this kind of behavior that 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 is needed to 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 make it so that the community uh remain cohesive very good thanks emergent go ahead yeah um i I don't know if we're getting close to wrapping up or not but uh just in case i wanted to make sure to get in um on this topic of you know like like sick pig said uh building the culture and process and all of that we still have to work it out and and figure it out and and everybody is still working on that in in a very constructive way and, and I hope that everyone watching this will, will really seriously consider uh, getting more involved, right? Uh, businesses who are working on, on, on Bitcoin Cash, um, you know, reach out, uh, just start to listen and, and talk and maybe assign someone from your company to, to, uh, to stay aware, you know, to actually get directly involved with, you know, various channels and, and try to make sure that they're aware, um, uh, you know, to communicate in that direction and then uh the the nodes and other uh, you know infrastructure level projects should do the same right like reach out to businesses and ask you know hey we're, we're thinking about this thing is this what you need and so forth so i think both directions need to go um and one way to do that is the the we're doing the bitcoin cash um commerce meetups for example so weekly i just run a meetup where anyone can come and talk about business on Bitcoin Cash, and it's been pretty fun. And uh, I would love for people to get more engaged and be more aware. So there's that. Um, I think Josh is 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 also doing something, and there may be others. So before we wrap up, I hope uh, anyone else here can talk about any efforts like that. Sure, Josh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think firstly, uh, what what uh, John just brought up is is a really like important part of this meeting, which is, which is if you are using Bitcoin Cash for your business, we at least we are as a, we by being like software Verde, like you can reach out to us and ask us questions. We really want to facilitate, uh, you know, the the knowledge transfer that businesses need in order to use Bitcoin Cash in a professional and, and reliable way. Um, so in addition to the the meetups that that John's hosting, um, which are awesome, we try to attend. You guys can just literally email us or, or reach out on us on Telegram. Um, it's just anything at softwareverity.com. You can just ask us whatever you need, especially if it's business related for, you know, hey, what's coming up in May or how do I do this? Or, you know, anything like that. Like we may not be able to help you directly, um, but we, if we don't, if we can't, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll direct you in the right direction. That's an awesome topic. And I, I really want to emphasize, you know, the, the openness for communication uh, to, you know, if you don't, don't feel like you're on your own kind of thing. Um, and then to John's other point, uh, we, we are hosting a, um, this is separate. Um, we are hosting like a development developer hangout, which is again, kind of like a cultural um, change from what we were you know, experiencing maybe even a year ago, um, really trying to boost uh, morale and coordination and, and just you know, friendliness of the other development groups. So if you're a Bitcoin Cash developer and you want to, um, you know, get to know the other devs and have some semblance of a, of a social relationship with them, um, then then you can join our our, uh, our Discord. It's, it's every, um, well, I host one every two weeks and I think John hosts one on the other week that I'm not hosting one, but I'm not exactly positive. Um, and, uh, but anyway, we will post the discord link and, and you can join us there. And it's again, just a very casual, no agenda. Hey, what are you guys working on? Who wants to talk about whatever today? Like it's anything from technical to, um, you know, like, Oh, my dog ate 
you know, a whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's very casual. Um, and again, it's really just meant to boost, um, like the camaraderie between developers so that we don't have um, animosity. Uh, so that just kind of helps facilitate upgrades and up, uh, facilitates new ideas when, when the ideas are uh, not um, shrouded by, you know, this kind of like animosity towards the actual developer. And then they can be more focused around the idea itself. So um, you're welcome to join uh, again. We'll post the link, um, but yeah. And, and no questions are stupid. That's kind of the, the, the background, right? It's, it's not recorded. So if you have like, oh, I want to do this and this, you can come in and say, uh, uh, what do people think about it? And, and maybe we'll have some, some uh, better solutions. And, but we can talk about it. That's the, that's the point. Very good. Thanks. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's probably a pretty solid place for us to wrap up. So I'd like to thank... Uh, everyone in the meeting for taking the time to join us for the discussion. You know, everyone's busy and it's, it's uh, I think as people have pointed out already, it's extremely important to be able to, in a public setting, you know, talk about these things, uh, both for the benefit of the people discussing, but also so that people uh, watching and following along can know what's going on in the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem and can feel secure about, uh, you know, what may be an investment for them or a tool or something valuable to their business. Either way, I think that's uh something valuable that you all have contributed to. And of course, thanks ev everyone for watching. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll see you during the next meeting. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. See you. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Bye.